years. Pray. Okay, I want to call this administrative hearing to order. Uh, it's concerning a vicious dog. And uh, the reason for this is I received a phone call on uh, July the 3rd concerning this dog that was going to be put down. And I thought, well, we're supposed to have an administrative hearing. We've had it in the past when we've had dog bites. And I said, uh, how come we haven't done that? With the exception of pit bulls. If a pit bull does that, it's automatically down. There's no questions asked, no nothing. Uh, but any other dog, we have had administrative hearing. We had a couple of uh, uh, boxers in the past that has been found to be vicious, and they were put down. With that being said, uh, I had mentioned that uh, to the person that had made the phone call, and I received a letter from uh, Aunt, uh, Patrick and Amber Sanders, and they said, we are requesting a hearing concerning the decision to euthanize our family pet. And I don't know that name, so I'm not gonna try. We feel that all the facts were not allowed to be presented to the officer assigned to our case. And there's some other things here that's being said that uh, will not say because it is making accusations. But with that, um, I think my first, well, and the other thing is, uh, we are being filmed, so we'll be on YouTube tomorrow, so uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, everybody be at your best behavior, too, as, as that, uh, with that being recorded. Um, with that being said, because the dog was the, is the one that's going to be put down, uh, in all fairness, uh, I will let the owners of the dog speak first because that is why we're here. We are putting the dog down and we want to know and we will let you speak. I trust you two are the owners of the dog. So you give me you give me a reason why that why that dog should not be put down. Can I help? I'm not sure I want you to. <laughs> uh, because if I let you, then the people that are here because of the bite okay. would want to have that. But that being said, uh, okay, I'll let you because then I will let the person okay. speak. The reason we're here, the dog has never bitten before, to our knowledge. The dog has been in the family since it's been six weeks old. It was in a fenced-in yard on a cable. The child that was in the yard did not have permission to be in the yard. The parents didn't know where the child was. And the dog, no, we've never had no problems. There's no reports of the dog had bitten before made to the city. Because otherwise we'd be right here, correct? If it had bitten before, you guys have a report? If it had been bitten? If it had bitten before, you guys would have a report of it. If we would have a report, we right. wouldn't be here, the dog would be dead. Exactly. So, as far as we're concerned, there's one dog bite. Well, let me go ahead. You talk, okay. I'll give okay. you some other Okay, statements. there's one dog bite. The child was taken <coughs> to the hospital. Um, they wanted the dog euthanized right then for rabies. The dog did not have its rabies vaccinations. Um, everybody who has children that's been around this dog since six weeks old. Never have had any trouble before. The children in question have poked the dog, have thrown rocks at the dog, have sticks. They shouldn't even be in the yard. It's a fenced in yard and the dog is on cable. It's private property. Okay. You say the dog has not before. No. Okay. Um, <coughs> Mr. Cochran, um, the night in question, which I take it was uh, June the 22nd, you, uh, would you 
state what took place. I received a call from a nurse at SMDH that said they had a child who was a victim of a dog bite. I put the program procedures, I went out there to the report, I talked to the victim, I talked to the victim's parents. They say to me that the dog had, the Sanders' dog had bit her about 30 minutes prior to my arrival. I asked them whether they, they contacted me, they said no, they, they tried to contact me, they made one contact with him, and they were in the process of trying to find a radio vaccination. I took my initial report. They stated they were had already contacted Sanders about the incident and he knew about it. I got a phone number from them. I actually called Patrick Sanders on my way back from the hospital and told him what was going on. So he could hear from the officer. Told him what was going on. He said, Yeah, I know I know what's happened. I informed him that I'd be contacting the code officer because we had policies to go by. State law actually says we have to do what we're doing. So I went by those policies. I told him we got there and Officer Brown both did say, hey, we gotta have a shot record of this dog. Obviously it's on a Friday night, I understand. It's gonna be hard to get a shot record. I understand that. He told me he'd make an attempt to get that. And I actually I was off for four days. When I came back on the fifth day, there still had been no shot record provided to me or to the chief or anybody else. So I contacted Middles Arc Animal Health Center myself and asked them. And they said that dog had not been seen for over a year. That's not saying they didn't have rabies vaccinations. I understand that. They just were not able to provide me with a rabies vaccination in the time frame I was speaking. Uh, pretty well, most of the other stuff, follow up was done by Code Officer Brown. Uh, like I said, he, he did the interviews. Initial, I did the initial interview. He did second interviews with both sides of, of the whole thing. He all the interviews after that. He actually had, uh, I know I was reading here, he actually talked to Dr. Toon about checking the dog. I, I wasn't even working there, so I don't know what happened there. All I know is I took the initial report and I called the Department of Procedure and State Law on how to handle the call. <coughs> Did you talk uh, You talked to the victim's family? Yes. That, that's, and then you talked to the dog owner's family? I talked, I did, I got it. Actually, I, I called and talked to her, his wife, I mainly talked to him soon after that on the phone and on the And in person? Yes, in person. <laughs> My question for you, you did not have a shot record that was present in the past year. When was the last time that dog had a shot? See, I took him, it was within a year, it was right at a year from this all of this. And I took him up there specifically for his shots. I was gonna have him neuter, everything. He was sick, he, you know, I was concerned about it. Well, come to find out he had worms. Okay, so they did multiple, they put so much stuff in his mouth, they gave him some sort of shot. They never told me they didn't do the vaccination. So I just assumed all, with all that they had done, that they had done it. It was my fault, I didn't ask, did they ready to vaccinate him? And then when I arrived, went to get the shot records for them. I made like 14 phone calls, calling this, this person and that person to get the number to a girl that works there. And she was there that day and I made contact with her. She went up there to get me the shop records that same day. And then she called me back and said that they did not, it said that they did not give him the rabies vaccination because if they were afraid it would be more harmful to him at that at his sickness day. When was the last time that dog had rabies vaccination? Never. Never? Um, He's just a little over two years old. He, he lived in the country, and I don't know. I've always been raised in the country, and I mean, we never had people around. And it's just one of the things, you know. I, I work. I was told I work uh, six, seven days a week. I mean, it's my fault. I mean, the dog, the dog couldn't clear him of all, any and all that he said he was a healthy dog. Unless I raised him, what's good? But I've been fined for that, that he did not have his rabies vaccination. My wife and I have been fined for that, and we will pay the fine. You've been given a ticket? Yeah, yeah, I haven't been. You haven't gone to court? Yeah, yet. right. Okay. <clears throat> 
code officer. Do you have anything to add to this report? The report? I don't know. How was you notified about the incident? I was notified by this dispatch. And did you go to the hospital? No, at that time I went to the dorm. That's what Officer Cochran had already been to the hospital to speak with his family. I didn't have anything further. Dog still in quarantine? He currently is. Now he's just not home. Quarantine period is over. The victim's family, would you like to speak at this time? The one thing that we want to make sure that is before you is the police reports. There's been some information presented today, but are the police reports been part of the record, part of your consideration? The police reports, I have the police reports as of the day of the incident. The newest report that I have is the fact that from the animal control officer on the very fact about the veterinarian having examined the dog and his report that he had given to the animal control officer. I suppose a couple of things. One is we were advised that the prosecuting attorney had made a recommendation that this was a vicious dog, and it was based upon information, I believe, in the police reports that this dog had bitten at least on two previous occasions. Okay. In the police report itself, on the victim's report that they had, the police department had received, yes, they had, this was, in fact, the third time that this, the second time that this child had been bitten or scratched or something with the dog, and then the other one was on another individual. So that is in that report. Okay. And I do have it on the police report. I'm sorry. I found it at the very bottom. I did have it. And has there been a phone by the animal control officer? Pardon me? Was there a finding by the animal control officer as to the finding or recommendation? Okay. My understanding on the first two bites, there was no report ever written, because if that had been the case, by city ordinances, that dog would have had to have been in a pen or kennel appropriate for the size of the dog. It would have to have a chain link fence by a certain gauge, certain height, and covered over that chain link fenced in area, and the fence would have had to have been in the ground. That would have been automatic on any dog that is being, a dog like this would be deemed vicious, that that's what would have happened. This dog would not have been able to get near anybody or anything like that. So those two reports, it's very, they should have been, if that had been the case, they should have been given to the animal control officer. Okay. There is the finding in the record because of the determination of the city attorney that the dog is vicious. Is that based upon all the information that you have before you? That is, that was based on those two, the other two bites. Because of that, it was deemed vicious. It was automatically, he was putting it down. Not the attorney, but the city attorney had recommended that. But when I received my information on the 3rd of July, 
that uh, information did not give to me uh, the other two. I was not aware of that. Have you seen pictures of the bike? Now, is that part of the record? The pictures of the bike? Yes. No, I have not seen any of those. We'd like to present them to you because we don't want you to have the idea that this was some kind of a myth. Uh, I believe that the, that the reports do indicate that uh, the, the dog clamped down on the side of his child and drug his child to about four feet. And we'd like uh, the pictures to come into the before you take them. You can present them. May I approach? Yes. May I keep them? May I keep these for my records? Thank you. Were you aware of the other two dog bags? We was not aware. Uh, the little girl's father, he was not aware of the first two dog bites or anything. And if say he did bite her, she just went over, told her mother about it, okay? There was no markings. Uh, and if it was a vicious dog, why would her mother ever allow her to come back to our yard? He was on a 25 foot quarter inch cable inside our chain link fence the gate always closed the only way that gate was open is the little girl had been in our house all day long and that's how she entered the property otherwise the gate would have been closed and he could have never even got out to where it supposedly happened what was the chain uh, the cable tied to it was fastened to the bottom of one of the chain link poles. That's very concrete. And they, they told me at first that I would have to quarantine the dog for 10 days. But at, that, at the time, I could do it at my own place. Okay, that's I, I kind of got out of line. I told the, the officer here that he's quarantined 24 7. The only way he thought that table is if I'm out there with him. And there ain't a day goes by that I don't go out there, love the <coughs> dog. My two-year-old little girl feeds me potato chips. Well, let me just tell you what you're going to be faced with. Let's just say that that had been reported and you was going to be faced with a dog that would be considered vicious. You would have an annual fee to pay the city $250, you would have to have insurance up to $100,000 for that, on that dog. Mm -hmm. And that dog uh, would be in that cage, as I mentioned. Uh, if it was outside, it would be on no, a chain no longer than six foot, a leash no longer than six foot, and have to have a muzzle on it. So that is it. You, uh, and I don't know, uh, you said an officer told you that it, you could not, that you could that was before the, have it uh, stayed at uh, your house? Well, that was before they got a phone call that said, oh, he better, he better the previous time that nobody knew about in terms of how or anything. Who told you that it could be quarantined at your place? Well, I'm pretty sure he did whenever I called Mr. Cochran. Yes, I believe he said that whenever he talked to me the first time. I got a little bit out of line with him. I got out. I was aggravated. And I told him that the dog was quarantined 24 7. 
And then that's when he said if I wasn't going to cooperate, that he would have the police officer come over right away and pick up the dog and quarantine him elsewhere. Well, any bike like that, the dog was taken to the animal shelter. Right. Can I say something there? Yes. Well, it says my report here, and I can read it right there. Thank you. That informed standards the dog needs to be quarantined for 10 days, just as the state law. Right. I didn't make that up. Also informed standards will be contacting the officer during the ground by the incident. When I explain the standards to do the state law and city policy, the dog may be quarantined at the animal shelter if they're allowed. But when I need to get a hold of him to tell him what's going on. So that's for Ray and I to report. He said, yeah, he did get kind of. And I, I don't, let's take me, I don't take personally. Every day, I mean, right. every day I don't take anything personally. When I told you that, you did say, nothing's happening to my dog. And I said, you gotta understand. We have policy, we have state law to go by. And then within what, 30 minutes, we're out. The only reason why I wasn't quicker is I was dispatched to a traffic stop where my sergeant needed my help. Otherwise, it would happen, it would have been a lot sooner. Is, uh, that the victims can pretend to be on the road and 